Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Widgets and Wonders. This is my show about great products from small companies. Now today we're going to take a look at a selection of weathering powders and pigments from Huge Miniatures. You might remember them, they've done um, tons of cool stuff with clump foliage and basing materials, flowers and um, static grass like tufts and stuff. And they're expanding now into some weathering pigments in some pretty unconventional colors too. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a selection of my miniatures that I think would look good with a little extra weathering because um, there's some kind of unique colors here too. And we're just going to play around with them so you can see what you think. Um, I'll do like a sort of like overview of the uh, total collection. There's like a cool stand you can get for it too if you want to get them all. And we'll just start grabbing some old brushes and banging some weathering powders down and giving them a go and see what you think. So anyway, let's get this underway. And so here it is, a selection of 12 different types of weathering compounds um, from Huge Miniatures. Now, there's a ton of different like uh, um, colors here. We've got like a sort of standard earth. This one's called peat. It's sort of like a dark brown, almost like a dried bark. Uh, gunmetal patina, so like it's a gunmetal gray. Um, kind of like an ashy color almost, although there is an actual ash color. Jet black. Um, which you can use for engines and soot and stuff like that, which is kind of cool at the ends of like pipes and stuff. Um, we've got uh, just an ash color, which could be cool for a whole bunch of different things, but um, actually looks really good on like green and uh, dark blue vehicles just to get them like a dust pattern. A pure white, a red rust, which would be pretty common for a lot of different weathering. Uh, Mechanica stuff and lots of metals. Sand, this looks really, really good on Almost anything. Um, if you're gonna do 15 mil World War II, this would be a great one for doing like uh, North Africa front stuff. Uh, and then Martian dust, it's a little more brown than the red rust. Orange rust, again, it's a little lighter. It's a nice sort of shocking one. A patina for doing like coppers and stuff. And then a lichen, which would be good for rocks. I'm actually gonna try this in the rocks, I think. Um, and it, it has instructions for use on the side. It's just uh, use a finishing uh, touch uh, before sealing your models, apply weathering um, powder with a dry brush, then seal with matte spray lacquer, reapply powder in between coats of lacquer. So you probably wanna do a couple layers if you really want like a strong finish. And we're gonna give that a try right now. So I wanted to try a few. I really wanted to try this lichen. Um, I wanted to try, where is it? The dusty one, the sand one on my Waboys. Um, I was thinking for this red, I would actually try something a little bit different, like do like the black maybe, or the gunmetal. Let's try the gunmetal, that might look cool. Um, and then I was gonna try the, this one, the weathering powder, the um, patina on like the clockwork stuff. In here. I just got some old GW brushes. This is like a, this is ancient, it's a blue handle brush. So Citadel small dry brush circa 2002. Uh, and then like a jacked up old army painter brush where all the lacquer on the outside fell off. Just got some water for cleaning my brush in between. Um, you do want it to be relatively dry when you use it and just some paper towel. And let's give it a go. So let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna open all these first. They do all come sealed, so you don't have to worry about the, oh, it's a stupid left hand. Anyway, it's easier if I just show you this way. See, they're all sealed, so you don't have to worry about losing any. Uh, so I'm gonna open all of these off camera and then we'll pop them open and give them a go. Last thing you're gonna want is some um, clear uh, top coat. I have this one right here, it's Dead Flat by Rust-Oleum. This is basically Tester's Dull Coat because Rust-Oleum made Tester's Dull Coat, it's been discontinued now. I love this stuff. Um, everybody is always super nervous about trying a new clear coat. I haven't had any problems with the can I've used so far. This is a new can. We'll see if I get the same results, but I'll use this in between rounds so we can see the finish here. And then I pop these open. It's nice because you can actually see on the lids. I keep these and put them back in afterwards just to keep these nice and sealed. Um, but you can see the colors really strongly here when you look at them. And yeah, you're just gonna grab your, I'm gonna use the dry brush actually. You're just gonna grab your brush and then just start working it in. I like this one, it's like really pebbly. Right, work into your recesses. And then we blast it with a little bit of the dull coat. And you want it on like relatively thick, like this lichen one. I'm, I'm liking the lichen. <laughs> oh, that's why you come to GMG for the infinite level dad jokes. Um, and then just give it kind of like a cool pattern. And then I'm gonna hit it with some dull coat. I'm just gonna do it right here on camera. Give that a shake. And just a little test blast, there we go. Let that dry and see how it looks. So you can see here what that's done is it's basically allowed the heavy like amount of it that was in the cracks to pool and giving you that kind of nice glow. And I'll do a second layer, like level of it, layer of it after that's dry and then we'll hit it again. But you can see there, it's got that cool greeny, lichen-y grown in the cracks look. Let's try some sand on my Waboys. And we're just gonna have it like on the leading edges. Just get into the leading edges like you'd imagine it would collect like around the edges of all of this, right? 
And you can just be rough with it. Like I actually really like just kind of pounding it in and then seeing what happens with the del coat when the del coat hits it and seeing what kind of finish you get. So you do have to finish afterwards. Remember, this is just like literally dust. It's like ground up Conte that you're applying to something. Um, and I actually used to make my own weathering powders when I was young and didn't know any better by crushing up artist Conte uh, with a mortar and pestle, which you can still do because it's almost effectively the same thing. It's just, it's ground pigment, right? And then we'll hit this with a, a dash of it and see how it looks. And we'll mat down a little bit. And yeah, we got that nice kind of like caught in the recesses, bits of sand and grit. We'll see how it looks when it dries. How's this one looking? Yeah, I'm liking that. Yeah, I need to stop. Just stop, Ash. Just stop. But yeah, it's a cool finish. Try some of the gunmetal. It's like gunmetal gray. Just beating into here. And again, just kind of work it into the edges. Like that's what I like to do. This is, remember I am also people doing this with my left hand while holding a camera because a tripod would make this way too far away for Witches and Winners. And this is just us giving it a go. I'm doing the show have a go part of this. And then we'll hit a little, little blasteroo. And see how it looks when it's dried up. Cool. Yeah, it's got a neat finish. And then we'll do some of this patina and we'll work it into the cracks in here. And again, that's what the brush is good for, is just kind of pushing it into the cracks of stuff. And this like weird Sigmari clockwork stuff. Everybody asks me where I get this tower from. This is just a GW, I think it's the Dreadstone Blight is this one. It's just been out of production forever. So it is GW. Oh yeah, look how cool that's gonna look when it's done. That's gonna dry sort of like sunk in there and give it a cool, almost like turquoisey green. Yeah, and come back to the vehicle, you can see it's just like sort of matted on in there for a nice sort of sandy in the cracks kind of finish. Obviously, I could do way, 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 way more <laughs> with it if I wanted to. And using a bigger brush light to push around more too. This one's pretty much totally dry. I'm happy with that effect. It looks really good. I'm not even going to bother adding anymore. But I could do like a second. If I want it to be stronger, just do like a second and third layer and just hit it again. But it's given a nice green glow to everything. And it has that nice like kind of mossy stuff growing on your dock. You know what I mean? It's been in the moisture sort of look to it. I'm kind of loving the gunmetal. It's just a sort of smoky finish. You work it at the recesses and you, you give it that kind of nice shadow. Um, almost like oil marking and stuff. Yeah, it's a nice finish. That, it gives it like, cause I just two-toned these. You can see I did like a flat red and then a little bit of red airbrushing and dry brushing. And I just um, sponge finished them uh, with a bit of like battle damage around the edges. So that little bit of like shadow in the recesses just by working it into the edges with the brush and then hanging with the dull coat. It's just a nice like finishing effect. Um, and that's what these are for. They're, they're for finishing, not for, for like making details or for adding that sort of random chaos. And there's all that patina in there which I think looks great. still drying a little bit, but definitely giving you the effect you're looking for. So you go, all manner of weathering powders from Huge Miniatures. Uh, I'll link everything in the description below if you want to check it out. And we'll see you next week for another Witches and Wonders. Till then, I'm Ash. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications of when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' belly and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.